Omega. We know you've missed going back to school to meet with your friends, resume your activities, and just be able to get back to how life was like on campus. But for the UMians who didn't get to set foot on campus yet, whether you are in basic education, senior high school, or college, let's take a little trip to the campus you can hopefully get to visit soon as you finish your education with UM. Luckily, we've got some of our beloved teachers to show you around UM's colleges and campuses so you'll know what to expect when you come back to school. It's only proper to start to the place where it all began. The UM Bolton and Embassy Campus were among the first structures to be put up as the University of Mindanao was starting to make a name for itself 75 years ago. Here at the Bolton site, you can find many of the offices for student services like the Registrar, Student Accounting Office, and Cashier among others. There's also a canteen where students and employees can purchase healthy food. Going further into Bolton campus, you can find on the first floor the College of Legal Education, where aspiring lawyers take their Juris Doctor degrees. There is even a dedicated library for law students across the cool and shaded quadrangle. On your way to the staircase to get the second floor, you get to pass by the AVR3, where lots of programs and other small gatherings are held. Going up to the second floor, you can find the office of the College of Business Administration Education. UM is the only school in Mindanao granted a Center of Excellence by CHED for its business and management programs, as well as Level 4 accreditation by the PACOCOA. So if you're planning on a career in business-related dealings, the CBAE is for you. Our college offers the following programs under the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Major in Entrepreneurship, Legal Management, Real Estate Management, Marketing Management, Financial Management, Human Resource Management, and the new program Major in Business Analytics. The third floor also houses our expansive library and information center. That covers the Bolton side. Let's head on over to the Embassy Campus. Across the UM Bolton is the Embassy side, and it's named that way because it used to be the grounds for Japanese Embassy back in World War II. Today, it is a sprawling area that houses the gymnasium for large UM events, our admission office, our Center for Health Services, or the student clinic and the external relation office out front on the first floor. Going up, you can find the International Affair Office where matters for foreign exchange students are processed among others. And walking further, you will find the office of the Senior High School Department. Outside of the Embassy Campus, on the Ponciano side, we have the UM Multitest Diagnostic Center, which offers various laboratory services like blood testing, x-ray, and doctor consultations. UM Bolton and Embassy Campus are located at the heart of downtown Davao, so it's easy to commute from here to many other places you might need to go. And speaking of which, did you know that UM has a campus at Matina? I'll send you over to our teacher friends in Matina Campus and they can show you around. We're now inside the University of Mindanao's largest campus, the 28-hectare Matina Campus, encompasses the Matina area going up to Ma'a. Right beside the Gravahan exit is the Basic Education Building, where it caters from kindergarten up to junior high school students with lots of space for learning and play. Going further inside the campus, you'll spot the four-story Business Engineering Building. Its first and second floor houses laboratories for engineering programs. It is the premier engineering school for its Level 4 accreditation granted by the Bakukoa and the Center of Development Studies by the Commission in Higher Education. UM College of Engineering offers the following programs. Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Major in 
infrastructural, water resource, transportation, and geotechnical. The third floor of the BE building is home to Davao Region's roster of top notchers of the CPA licensure examination. The College of Accounting Education has level 3 accreditation from PACRACOA and is certified by the Commission on Higher Education as a Center of Development. The College of Accounting Education offers the following programs Bachelor of Science in Accountancy, Bachelor of Science in Internal Auditing, Bachelor of Science in Accounting Information System, Bachelor of Science in Management Accounting. The Learning and Information Center takes up the entire topmost floor of the BE building. It houses all the university's books available for borrowing. Let's take a scenic trip to the College of Hospitality Education. Located near the UM Athena Gymnasium, the College of Hospitality Education has level 3 accreditation from Pakukoa and offers the following programs. Bachelor of Science in Hospitality Management and Bachelor of Science in Tourism Management. The College of Hospitality Education also has industry-level facilities like the Las Pesas Mini Hotel, the Function Hall, and the Kitchen and Bakery areas. Located behind the gymnasium is the UM Hangar where students can test their inventions and other experiments. The Hangar holds the university's Coleoptera Research Center, the first university-based center in the Philippines dedicated to study the conservation and cataloging of Philippine beetle species. Every large university such as UM has a place where students gather for major events. And UM doesn't just have its Bolton Gymnasium, we also have the Matina Gymnasium too. Equipped with fold-away bleachers and professional standard flooring for the courts, the gym is the perfect venue for sporting and other extracurricular activities. Despite being a bustling school, there's plenty of space in UM Matina for some quiet time and to be surrounded by nature. UM Matina has a mini forest with tables and benches because UM believes that learning and rest isn't just limited to the walls of a room. Is this tour making you a little hungry? Across the gymnasium is the university canteen and food court, which serves a variety of affordable meals, snacks, and drinks where students can eat comfortably. Tables are regularly sanitized and electric fans are provided. Let's head down to the JT building. Named after the school's founder, Guillermo E. Torres, the building is home to Davao Region's producer of top notchers in the licensure examinations for teachers. The College of Teacher Education offers the following programs. Bachelor of Elementary Education, Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Special Needs Education, Bachelor of Physical Education, and Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biological Sciences, English, Social Studies, Filipino, and Mathematics. Also, found on the first floor of the GET building is the Audiovisual Room 2 an air-conditioned and carpeted, fully equipped facility with cinema-style folded seating, which is frequently used for different programs. The second and third floor of the GAT building is occupied by the premier criminology school in Davao, the College of Criminal Justice Education. The CCJE offers Bachelor of Science in Criminology and Bachelor of Science in Industrial Security Management. Heading further inside the campus, away from GET, will reach the Deputy Building. Named after former school president Dolores P. Torres, the four-story building houses the mini auditorium, the quality management office, research and publication center, institute of pedagogical and assessment center, some laboratories, and pocket gardens on its first floor. Located on the Deputy's second floor, is the College of Arts and Sciences Education. CASE offers the following programs. Bachelor of Arts in English, Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, Bachelor of Science in Agroforestry, Bachelor of Science in Forestry, Bachelor of Science in Biology, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, 
Bachelor of Science in Public Administration, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and Bachelor of Science in Social Work. The third floor of the DPT building houses the College of Health, Sciences, Education, or the CHSE. CHSE offers Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. Sharing the floor with CHSE is the College of Computing Education. CCE offers Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, Bachelor of Science in Information System, Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Multimedia Computing, major in Game Development and Digital Animation. The topmost floor of the DPT building is home to the Creative Academic Unit of UM, the College of Architecture and Fine Arts Education. CAFAE offers Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Bachelor of Fine Arts major in Painting. Let's head back down and you'll see that across the DPT building is our Professional Schools building. It is led by its Dean Dr. Eugenio S. Guhau and serves to bring globally recognized ISO standard and PACOCOA accredited postgraduate and doctorate degrees to more Dabawenios. We're about to head out now, but before we leave, let's take a look at the UM Oval Track and Sports Stadium. It has a 400-meter rubberized track suitable for track and field training and other sporting activities. The sports stadium served as the venue for the 2019 Palarong Pambansa. Thanks for joining this campus tour! Oh, by the way, even though UM is already a formidable university that is second in the whole Philippines to offer the most number of Pakukoa accredited programs, we do not rest! The administration keeps on working very hard just to be sure that more Filipinos here and abroad are able to obtain quality, affordable, and open education. Stick around as we discuss the online enrollment process and online learning management system. Hope to have you here at UM soon, Ga! And good morning! Maga and welcome to the University of Mindanao. We just have seen no, the two campuses here in um, Davao City, and that is the UM Bolton and also the Bolton campus. We also featured in that video uh, those different um, programs that we offer here in the University of Mindanao. And that is why we are here on our um, program info session for you to uh, have more knowledge and be able to decide you know, what program or what course would you take in college. And so this uh, morning, no, uh, we are going to feature two programs under the College of Health and Sciences Education no, here in the University of Mindanao, and that is the um, Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology and also the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. I know that um, you also have knowledge no, with this, but then when it comes to um, some sort no, of, of information no, needed, no, in order for you to decide, ah, okay, this is the course that I'm going to take no, once I go to college. No, so again, this is the, the UM program info session featuring two programs here in, in the university under the College of Health and Sciences, Health Sciences Education, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and also the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. And you know what, guys? We are, we are very lucky. We are very blessed no, this morning because two of the ex excellent no, and very um, high-profile no, no, mga professors here in the University of Mindanao are here with us. No? Together with us this, this morning are the program heads no, of the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. We have Professor Ruel Nicholson Solano. Sir, can I have your video and kawaii-kawaii to our um, uh, incoming freshmen? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Okay. And so we also have Together with us this morning, the program head of BS Nutrition and Dietetics. Um, we have here Professor Sherwin Solan Soliana. Sir, kawai kawai naman dyan. Good Ayan. morning. All right. So soon, no, they will be um sharing to us uh, later on. They will be sharing to us, no, what are the perks, no, of choosing or enrolling in these programs. So by this time, may we, um, may I ask, no, our 
participants, our incoming freshmen, if they're excited to know, know what are the perks of enrolling this program? Can I have a virtual like there or thumbs up? Ayan. Meron ba? Thumbs up. All right. Thank you so much for those thumbs up. And mind you guys, no, this um, program info session natin is also streaming live in our YouTube channel. So you can go to the University of Mindanao official no, because once you have your problems no, with, your, with your connection no, um, and you're not able to enter our Zoom, you can go to our YouTube and you can still no, um, know, know what are the things no. Um, that you may uh, may have to know with regards to these uh, programs, all right? You can also send the link no, to your classmates or your friends who are also would like to know about these programs, all right? So I think we are set. So without further ado, let's start our program info session. Ladies and gentlemen, our first program, no, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and to give us more about of this program, Ladies and gentlemen, the program head of BS Medical Technology, Professor Ruel Nicholson Solano. Sir? Yes, thank you so much, Sir Benz. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are all doing fine in a, um, in a, in a Monday morning. No? So we should really um, have the energy for the entire week. And we will start your week by giving you, providing you information regarding the Two College of Health Sciences Education programs. We have the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science, and we also have the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. So uh, let me do the first. Uh, let me do, let me uh, guide you with the first part. No? So for the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology or Medical Laboratory Science. So as what we all hear. In our community, we are um, commonly known as medtechs, diba? medtechs inside the clinical laboratory, inside the hospital, or maybe you can also see us in different community areas uh, serving people in the public health uh, arena. And for this moment, I will now be presenting my presentation that will guide us in learning and understanding the nature of the program, the Bachelor of science in medical technology, medical laboratory science. So for a moment. Okay, so here we uh, here it is the uh, presentation for the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology program. So before I proceed with our discussion or our presentation, may I just ask if everyone can clearly hear me? If you can see what is projected in front of you, um, can you see what is projected? May I ask somebody from the group? No. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much for responding. So let us start our journey to the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science Program of the University of Mindanao. So we have here, as what you can see, we have committed to care. So that is the core concept of our college. No? The College of Health Sciences Education in the University of Mindanao, we are committed to care. And the college is composed of different programs and we are located in the Matina campus of the University of Mindanao, Davao City. So as you can see, we have here the campus map. So nakikita nyo ba kung saan ang DPT building? So when you, uh, if you've um, heard it earlier, no, we are located on the uh, third floor of the DPT building. So we, as you can see, we are located here, diba? Um, under the cloud. Okay, so let us proceed. Now, just to recall what was mentioned in the previous um, video clip, 
The College of Health Sciences Education is composed of four different programs. Namely, we have the Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy. We also have the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. And lastly, we, are, we have the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science. So as you can see, um, the four logos of the programs are, in, are inculcated in the, in, the, in the composition or it is um, um, para, siyang, para siyang part na, uh, para siyang diamond na piece or part parang brilliante no? in the College of Health Sciences Education logo, the college logo. So we are part of this. And it has um, been part of it since 2018. So it was just 2018 when the program was offered no? in the College of Health Sciences Education in the University of Mindanao. Yes, since it, it started year 2018, the population kept on growing. No? So um, we are very um, happy that our family in the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science program is continuously growing. As you can see, wala pang proper distancing ang nasa picture because this photo was taken um, before COVID-19 pandemic. So um, as you see, we are growing so fast. No? And currently, we are more than 300. We have more than 300 students in the program. And we are still hoping that you could um, join us in our um, humble family in the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Med Lab Science, and of course, under the banner of the College of Health Sciences Education. Now, what are the topics that will be discussed in this presentation? The manner of instruction of the BSMP MLS program in the university. We are also going to present the community extensions we are doing here in the university. The research era, the research arena, and the area for researches for both um, instructors and students will also be presented. The student organization will also be illustrated later on. And of course, the career opportunities of the BSMP MLS graduates. No? So if you will be part of our humble family, later we will be discussing the possible career path that you are going to pursue. Uh, that depends on your, um, your heart. No? That depends on your choice. So. Uh, if ever you are very interested, later on you can have your questions maybe that um, we uh, will really address. You might have your clarifications and later we will uh, give you enlightenment about that. Now in terms of instruction, pretty much like any other programs of the University of Mindanao, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science is still implementing its core competency, its um, values. Um, we, we provide quality, affordable, and open education. Quality because we, as um, the University of Mindanao, continues to see, seek quality education in a global standard. No, we are, we are in the BSMP MLS program. We have the CMO 13 series of 2017 so that we may be guided of the different policies, different um, uh, policies, guidelines for all the uh, important matters, especially with the instruction, uh, instruction part for our future medical laboratory scientists. And aside from that, we are currently having our limited face-to-face -face laboratory classes for the selected year levels. And of course, we conduct um, the same limited and uh, the face-to-face -face class um, examinations, the implementation of the comprehensive examination are, uh, examinations are given um, on a face, um, via face-to-face -face, um, implementation. So as you can see here, uh, the students, uh, particularly the interns, no, they have their um, school-based um, internship part one, that was, um, I think, first semester of this school year. This was taken uh, first semester of this school year. So they were able to, um, to assess their capabilities in doing the 
the uh, required competencies that the program um, aims to provide them, no? the basic microscopy and other procedures um, that are incorporated in the program of Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. As you can also see here in part, as part of the pictures we have illustrated here, uh, they have their comprehensive examinations, they have their face-to-face um, -face comprehensive examinations. And we also have here the interns. They started well, they have, they are, we have six interns right now, and they are currently, um, they are deployed in the Adventist Hospital Davao City. No? They are currently um, practicing their, their craft, whatever they have learned for the past three years, they are now um, putting that in action, particularly in the Adventist Hospital um, Davao City, which is considered our partner institution, our industry partner for um, implementing our internship program. And as well as, as you can see here, this photo on the uh, right um, lower portion, the instructors of the BSMTMLS program um, had their training on the molecular biology held at the <coughs> excuse me at the University of the Philippines Mintal Campus or UP Davao. So we had our um, training on basic molecular biology techniques and procedures so that we may be able to incorporate our training with our knowledge and then share it to our students. Because one of the subjects we offered in the BSMT MLS program is the molecular biology. And we are already aware diba, that one of the most sophisticated diagnostic tests we have for COVID-19 is the PCR, RT-PCR. Even, alam ko, even ang mga students na present ngayon are already aware or are informed of the term PCR or the molecular biology diagnostic test. Kasi nagiging requirement din siya no, to a lot of admission in different um, institutions, maybe in school, maybe in offices, and etc. Okay, so we have here the copy of the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology uh, curriculum, the list of courses that we offer under the program. So what we have here are some of the... Uh, um, subjects offered, well, aside from the subjects that the University of Mindanao added in the curriculum. No? So these are the, um, these courses are the, uh, um, the specific courses related to medical technology profession. So what we have here are, we have um, the principles of medical laboratory science practice one, particularly focusing on the introduction part of med tech laboratory safety and waste management. We also have the PMLS2 that focuses on clinical laboratory assistance and phlebotomy. So in this particular course, students are able to um, practice, but before practicing the phlebotomy or the art of blood extraction, yes, kumukuha na po tayo ng dugo at this very point of time, PMLS2. But before we do that, we make sure that the students are well equipped with the knowledge, the theory, or the principles behind the proper collection of blood. So that will always be the main focus of um, before implementing the actual blood extraction or the phlebotomy as part of its competency you know, in this particular course. Another course or subject we have is the health information system for medical laboratory science. So this course offers the reality inside the hospital, no? how the information are being kept, how the information in a healthcare unit is stored, and what are the things we take into consideration before providing any information, like for example, laboratory results, or like for example, medical histories and etc. So there is, um, an, I think there is an emphasis on the Data Privacy Act in this particular course as well. Another equally significant foundation course under the program is the Community and Public Health for MLS. So in this particular course, the students are able to conduct different community extension programs, lectures, and other activities 
that will make them realize how important giving health information, providing health information to our community. Another subject, of course, we have here is the principles and strategies of teaching in medical laboratory science. Well, as how it is very evident, not through me, I am currently an academician. I've been um, working in the academe since 2016. So another career path for BSMP MLS graduates or RMTs is to pursue their career in the academe. And in this particular subject, they will be taught by um, a licensed professional teacher and of course, a healthcare professional as well to really incorporate the value of health education in the program, particularly in the BSMP MLS approach. Another subject, we have the inorganic and organic chemistry. Well, basically, we are somewhat co are composed of different chemistry because um, one significant section inside the laboratory is the clinical chemistry where we have our lipid profile, where we have our fasting blood sugar. I know if you have your parents or your grandparents diba, with you right now, they can really relate kapag magsabi na na, Next month, kailangan na magpa-blood chem or magpa-complete blood chem. So the clinical chemistry section is the particular section that deals with the analysis of different uh, metabolic, metabolic analytes in, our, in the human body. So aside from that, we also have, of course, the foundation subject. We have the human anatomy and physiology with pathophysiology. So in this particular course, we are going to deal with the study of the structure, the human body, uh, the structure of the human body, as well as the different um, organ systems function. And of course, incorporated with the pathophysi uh, pathophysiology uh, principles no, or discussions, diba? the ideal mechanism of the body and what happens to the body after a certain disease or pathophysiologic mechanisms happen. Diba? Another um, equally significant course, we have the biochemistry for med lab science, cytogenetics, biostatistics, and epidemiology. We are also going to have the human histology, um, both clinical chemistry one and clinical chemistry two. So in this particular course, we are going to dig deeper on the metabolites of our body you know, and um, their principle, their clinical significances, and how we respond to a pathologic result, like for example, an increased um, glucose level, blood glucose level, or an increased um, creatinine and et cetera, and correlate them with the clinical manifestations of the patients. So we also have the microbiology, um, one and two, microbiology, the clinical bacteriology, Microbiology too that focuses on mycology and virology. So bacteriology um, is the branch of microbiology that specifically deals with the bacteria. So as what we all know, not germs and microorganisms are not directly pertaining to bacteria itself lang. So we have a lot of microorganisms. We have fungi, we have viruses, prions, and etc. So we have microbiome 1, microbiome 2. For microbiome 2, we are going to deal with the fungi that are clinically significant and, of course, the viruses, just like how we deal, how we um, study the COVID-19 right now, whether if it's an RNA or an ADNA type of virion or an infectious agent. Clinical parasitology is another course that is equally significant Clinical parasitology offers also a broad spectrum on dealing with different um, uh, parasites that are considered um, pathogenic to our uh, to the humans. No? Parasites that are capable of inducing harm, um, not just amongst humans, but it can also um, promote uh, zoonotic and reverse zoonosis, zoonosis and reverse zoonosis in terms of its epidemiology and other important related concepts. We also have hematology one and hematology two. If you happen to see some series like um, Cells at Work, I think, so it was pretty much illustrated in that particular series how the cells work, just like the red blood cells offers um, 
distributes oxygen and nutrients to the body parts as well as how the white blood cells take part in the immunity, how it is being differentiated into immune types of cells or non-immune types of cells, specific types of um, types of white blood cells with non uh, with specific functions. We also have their part on the immunity as classified as part as the second line of defense and third line of defenses for specific immunity. So aside from that, we are going to have the immunology, the study of the human immunity, and serology, the immunohematology or the blood banking. The, um, what are the things that we are taught in this subject? We have um, compatibility testing, cross-matching, blood typing, and etc. Aside from that, we are going to have the analysis of urine and other body fluids. So I will be handling the AUBF or the clinical microscopy as it's part of my um, field of interest, the analysis of urine and the other body fluids. Yes, in this particular course, we are going to have different procedures like, for example, urinalysis, um, fecalysis, and even semenalysis. We are going to um, elaborate the clinical significances of these diagnostic tests in diagnosing particular physiologic or pathophysiological um, state of the human or of, of people. And aside from that, we have histopathologic and cytologic techniques, molecular biology and diagnostics, laboratory management. We are also going to discuss the medical technology laws and bioethics, particularly focusing the RA5527, which is the main um, body of uh, the legal, um, it, I think it's the standard, the legal standard of the uh, profession, the medical technology profession here in the Philippines. And aside from that, we also have the introduction to medical laboratory science research and the medical laboratory science research paper writing and presentation. And I think um, it's not been part of this curriculum, but we have the clinical internship and for the University of Mindanao's approach towards excellent or quality education, we also have the competency appraisal of the different board examination subjects for medical technology as part of the course offering for the fourth year level of the program. And now to implement the instruction to give enlightenment to the curriculum, we also have the professors. So you will meet them if you are, if you are going to join our humble family you know, under the College of Health Sciences Education. So we acknowledge the support of our dearest UMMLS instructors. Well, as um, I am also part of it. So we have here Ma'am Elizabeth C. Bills. We also have here Ma'am Maria Cristina Navarro, Sir Earl Nicole Lucena, and Sir Janelle Silguera. So as of now, we are five instructors under the College of Health Sciences BSMP MLS program. So we are really striving, um, we are continuously striving to seek um, knowledge no, and to hone our expertise as medical technologies, as medical laboratory science, as we continue to progress our, our academic um, progress. The three of us are already masters in medical technology and the two of us are currently finishing their thesis for their master. So we, we are really um, giving our best to provide quality education to our, um, to our future medical technology. So I hope you can also be part of it, of our humble family. We also have here the modes of instruction. As you can see here, we have in the photo, we, well, aside from giving limited face-to-face -face laboratory classes, face-to-face um, -face examinations, um, internship and deployment, we also have the online platform that is um, a competent platform in giving instruction, and that is the Blackboard LMS. So we are currently having or implementing our blended um, methodology on teaching, no? particularly by utilizing the BBLMS. In the area of community extensions, since 2018, we are continuously giving our service, our um, imparting our 
little contribution to the community. We had already conducted um, random and fasting blood sugar. Diba? We are also um, in this uh, newspaper, we, uh, it was, um, I think it was published in 2019. No? So in this particular photo, we did our um, FBS and RBS. And uh, as part of our CPH subject, we also perform free fecalysis, uh, feeding program, and whatever programs it is that are helpful um, to our community, to our selected and identified community. So we, uh, we really value the concept of providing um, community service amongst um, our uh, countrymen no? or to our neighborhood. So I think it's really uh, graved in the heart of the healthcare profession that to serve is to extend. I mean, the service, the healthcare service should be extended because as I think it has always been part of being a healthcare professional um, is to give service without even asking for a return. So that is one um, inspiring or motivating area of community extensions as part of it. Well, of course, we also have our step-by-step uh, step-by-step um, um, step -step process of achieving excellence in the area of research. So we are um, conducting different seminars, different um, lectures, and our students have been participating um, in different research fora, as well as the teachers are also uh, are participating in different seminars that will provide us um, knowledge and will advance us in terms of our uh, knowledge gap in research. So we are continuously seeking for knowledge in terms of research. We are continuously collaborating with different programs. We have different um, list of parang, parang to-do list in the area of research. We are currently having our institutional research. And of course, our students, particularly our third year students are currently having their thesis. So in terms of giving and providing them the value of being a researcher, the University of Mindanao is really supportive in terms of honing them to becoming um, a great um, researcher in the near future. And now for the student organization, we have um, the University of Mindanao certified student organization for the medical technology, medical laboratory science students. And the student organization is called the Guild of Aspiring Medical Technologies or GAMITS. So just like any other organizations, the GAMITS continuously strives for excellence. And as evidence, we have here um, different certificates that will illustrate how eager our medical technology students are for bragging, um, for, for gaining a lot of achievements, of course, to hone their, their craft or to hone them holistically. As one of the great evidence, we have here uh, Mr. Lin Cabanit and Ms. Christian Mile Matute, who were um, awarded as the ambassador and ambassadress for the um, PAMET Week um, that was held last year, 2021. Um, it was a week long no, or a month long celebration of the medical technology profession and the students taking up medical technology. So it was actu actually participated with different med tech schools you have from our um, neighboring schools. You have from the SPC, UIC, MMFC, um, JMC. You also have from Tagum Doc and Broken Shire. And different medical technology schools try to compete in different um, competitions to showcase their uh, students' talents and, of course, their intellectual capabilities. So we are very fortunate no, that both the ambassador and the ambassadress, the Mr. and Ms. of um, PASME, um, the ambassador and ambassadress for medical technology students, were from the University of Mindanao. So I 
I am very um, proud of them because both of them are really deserving. They are both um, good looking and they also have the heart to be an inspiration to all future medical technologies. And of course, they are also brainy. Kasi kapag taga UM ka, um, you are considered a warrior. No? So it will really um, showcase your strength in surviving a particular program. So matira matibay, pero rest assured, pag uh, graduate ka, well, of course, uh, data will show that the employability of our graduates here in the University of Mindanao is at the top of the list. Aside from that, we have here, as you can see in the photo, diba, we have six interns. Well, they started by having 25 of them. So later on, medyo merong delay siguro yung iba, but it doesn't ne necessarily um, delete or necessarily alleviate their motivations in proceeding or pursuing their career in the medical technology profession. But these six interns are equally deserving to be on their place right now. They are currently uh, um, are deployed in the Adventist Hospital in, the da in Davao City to really hone them in becoming future medical technologies. So months after right now, uh, months later, we do not know if some of them will proceed to pursue their career in um, the clinical laboratory as full-time medical technologies or full-time medical laboratory scientists, or maybe some of them can be a future researcher or scientist by providing or by focusing their craft in the research area of the profession. And of course, some of them might be a public health officer or an academician like me to proceed to um, um, in academic institutions, teaching their craft, being a vessel of learning, and uh, continuously giving or providing quality education. Okay, aside from that, they can also be quality assurance specialists. And of course, sometimes it has always been part of parang connecting the medical technology program or the BSMT MLS program considered, uh, it's sometimes it is being considered or classified as the best preparatory course for medicine. No? Well, I think I could somehow bear witness to it by comparing the curriculum of the uh, bachelor, of Sci uh, bachelor in Medicine and of course the BSMT MLS because some of our subjects or the courses offered in the program are somewhat alike um, to that of the curriculum for medicine, just like, for example, histology, anatomy and physiology, microbiology, and etc. Though it will offer, of course, it will be of um, an advanced um, para approach. So there you have the career opportunities and a lot of career opportunities for BSMT MLS graduates. And to give you why do you need to consider enrolling or what, how are you going to be convinced with our, with, um, or how are you going to be convinced with the uh, things that I have mentioned earlier? We have here a video clip that will provide you information on your house and why. So we really are providing quality, affordable, and open education in the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science in the, of the University of Mindanao. So without any further ado, let me present to you the video presentation. The University of Mindanao's Guild of Aspiring Medical Technologists is the official student organization for MLS students accredited by the University's Office of Student Affairs. Two years since it was established last 2019, two years on the crest of a wave in taking the lead and refining aspiring medical technologists. The Guild of Aspiring Medical Technologists, or the so-called GAMITS, 
has come a long way in fulfilling its desire, nurturing the development of the students, creating a sustainable relationship within the community, and inaugurating a central body that ensures no student is left behind. It also gears the students with their core values such as professionalism, commitment, and being proactive to guide them in their future college. The high regard for the medical laboratory science profession has always been the focus of this student organization. I guess one of the best memories I will never forget is when we placed as the overall first runner-up during the very first time we participated in the inter-school medical technology culmination last 2020 here in Davao City. Aside from this, the number of awards we have received from various competitions has been very overwhelming. It was genuinely historical for us to compete with different schools for the first time considering the number of students we have. From victories in every competition to excellent students are the manifestation of how GAMITS endeavors to stand out from the rest. The interconnection of GAMITS and the University of Mindanao is very evident in the microscope and its logo. They have the same end in setting out to shape students to become productive individuals even outside the four corners of the classroom. Like how the word GAMITS implies, the collaboration of diverse students are fused to create one goal. It also inculcates the virtues of excellence to the students. Hence, to lead with compassion, to serve with honor, and to aspire with persistence are the tenets of the Guild of Aspiring Medical Technologists. Definitely, I could say that GAMITS is not just an ordinary organization, but this is where you can find a home where we work together as a family to save and help more patients in the near future. As one of the newest additions to the Medical Technology Medical Laboratory Science Schools cluster in the Philippines, the University of Mindanao envisions providing a pool of efficient future medical laboratory scientists. From having only 25 enrollees to 191 aspiring medical technologists, the University of Mindanao Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology program continues to grow even during the pandemic. We are not just investing on quality program, but we are also investing on our students. We are dedicated to produce quality professionals and competitive members of the society that will deliver the standards of quality medical laboratory healthcare in the future. The COVID-19 pandemic brought a lot of challenges to academic institutions, including the University of Mindanao. But because we are guided by the values of excellence, honesty, integrity, and teamwork, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology program of the University of Mindanao continuously strives to offer quality, affordable, and open education. The University of Mindanao is now in its fourth year of offering medical technology or medical laboratory science course under the College of Health and Sciences Education. The University of Mindanao continues to provide quality and affordable education for all, employing the highest standard of education. Its core values, such as the excellence, honesty, integrity, innovation, and teamwork are collectively manifested by the administrators, faculty, employees, students through excellence in stronger character, excellence in resilience, excellence in citizenship, and excellence in lifelong learning. The University of Mindanao has state-of-the-art facilities such as newly established microbiology laboratories in preparation for the limited face-to-face -face on laboratory procedure practices and classes. The University conducts online classes utilizing the Blackboard Open LMS as the primary instructional delivery platform. 
the faculty and staff of medical technology or medical laboratory science department are well equipped with knowledge, attitude, and skills necessary for the competency of students holistically to become globally competitive medical technologists in the future. So if you are looking for a school that is committed to achieve quality education in medical technology or medical laboratory science, the University of Mindanao is your best choice. Trainings and classes will have definite endings. UMMLS graduates can take part in different fields. May it be in hospital and clinical setting as a medical laboratory scientist on duty, in academe as a vessel of learning and information to future laboratory scientists, in scientific institutions as researchers endowed with future potential scientific breakthroughs in medical, agricultural, and industrial community. Universidad ng Mindanao is investing in producing quality professionals who can take part of bigger roles in the community and be the makabayan manggagawa ng laboratorio at siyensya that take root on theoretical and scientific domain of study and deliver service with a heart of compassion. So what are you waiting for? Enroll and join the University of Mindanao College of Health Sciences Education Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science. Okay, so what are you waiting for? Consider enrolling in the Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, Medical Laboratory Science of the University of Mindanao. Thank you very much, everyone, and I hope to see you um, soon here in the University of Mindanao Matina Campus, enrolling in our program. And uh, at this juncture, I would like to introduce an equally significant course or program under the College of Health Sciences Education, particularly the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics, we have Sir Sherwin P. Soliano, RND LPP. A round of virtual applause, please. Um, good morning, everyone. So, um, na marami tayong um, na nalaman no, sa uh, shinier ni Sir um, Roel kanina regarding uh, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Sciences or the Medical Technology. So right now, or um, at this juncture, I will be introducing you no know, uh, one of the programs also of the College of Health Sciences um, Education, which is the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. So before anything else, um, I would like also to um, give thanks or um, would like to uh, express no, our sincerest gratitude to um, the external relations office no, for initiating this kind of activity no, in order for our students also, especially those who are not yet decided no, what path or what course they will be taking in the college level. No, so this will really help them or this will really guide them. So choosing the right path or um, college degree is like looking in a menu. So we all have our own desires or own tastes. So if um, a while ago, the uh, medical technology focuses on the different um, sciences and techniques in the laboratory or in the hospital. So this time we will be considering options um, for food and nutrition. So if you want to support and care for others in the community by making educative or educated decisions about food, nutrition, and science, or you just want to teach and be a coach for others on food preparation, healthy food choices, 
and food um, or analyzing excellent eating habits? Or do you want to be a successful food entrepreneur? Then you might consider taking up Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. So what is BS Nutrition and Dietetics? Next slide, please. So the BS Nutrition and Dietetics is a four-year program that develops students to be globally competitive professionals. The program that also teaches students the principles and procedures of the use of food for therapeutic purposes in the management of persons suffering from a disease. So sa ating mga viewers, no, both here in the Zoom and YouTube, uh, you might be wondering or um, experience no, um, na naging watcher kayo sa hospital or in hospital kayo, and then you might be wondering, sino kaya nagluluto ng food? Or sino kaya nagpa-plan ng food? Well, it's our job as a registered nutritionist dietitian to make sure that the food given to patients are actually um, safe and in accordance to his or her medical condition. Not just that, we also immerse ourselves in the community by teaching our parents, our students, and, our, and other stakeholders, especially our um, government um, officials or leaders, on the right way or the um, ways on how to improve you know, the nutritional status of the community and to make sure that, that um, all the time uh, they have food access or they have access to uh, good food supply and making sure that the food that they serve for the family, especially to our mothers, you know, are safe and will really give a proper nourishment for our children or for ourselves. Next. So we have our program um, education objectives, which are statements no, that will reflect on um, how our future graduates will perform or what are the necessary things or outcomes that we expect no, for our graduates to perform once they will um, be a registered nutritionist dietitian someday or after they graduate and pass the licensure examination. So first, engaging in lifelong learning and understanding the need to keep abreast of developments in the field of nutrition and dietetics, which means that we emphasize you know, our students to engage themselves in professional development and enhancing their um, capabilities by looking into or participating to different um, activities that will enhance not just their knowledge, their skills, but also their character as future professionals. Next, communicate effectively orally um, and also in writing using both English and Filipino. So since we envision to have a globally competitive uh, professionals or to be specific, registered nutritionist dietitian someday, we are also training our students to also have good communication skills, which are um, or through the help you know, of our um, faculty you know, that are teaching um, different courses related to English communications and also in uh, technical writing, because uh, one of the fields also of uh, being a nutritionist dietitian is we will be communicating with our target um, stakeholders for specific programs. No? So, uh, for that to be realized, we need to uh, communicate effectively and efficiently. Next, we will be working, um, or our, our future graduates are expected to work effectively and independently in multidisciplinary and multicultural teams. So in the hospital, no, as part of the um, healthcare team, no, we need to be a good um, team player, which means that we can collaborate though, with other members of the healthcare team. Good thing here in the University of Mindanao is that we they house no, or in one college, which is College of Health Sciences Education, the members of the healthcare team because we have here Bachelors of Science in Nursing, we have pharmacists um, or the Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, 
We also have medical technology and nutrition and dietetics. So it's actually a training ground for our students to practice, not teamwork, on how they perform their duties in a setup that requires multidisciplinary actions or in an environment, in, or an environment with diverse um, culture or even personality. Next, act in accordance with the ethical, professional, and social responsibility. Here in the University of Mindanao, we don't just prioritize academic excellence, but also we uh, practice or we mold them holistically, which involves you know, um, character, building character, integrating values you know, in every courser, courses that we have for them to be, um, for them to know what is uh, right and what is wrong and for them to behave and to be uh, professional no and also to know their responsibility in the society especially that as a future registered nutrition dietitian we need also to lead by example next uh, promoting and preserving filipino historical and cultural heritage in line with their chosen specialization in, in nutrition and dietetics so later on we will know the um, different fields of specialization in nutrition and dietetics. And with those fields of um, NDs or uh, nutrition and dietetics, we always uh, make sure that we still promote and preserve the Filipino historical and cultural heritage as evidenced by uh, our um, lineup of courses or subjects um, here in the BSND curriculum, wherein we integrate uh, regional cuisines because um, we all know that food is really a, food is part of our um, culture and traditions. That is why when we analyze or when we understand the uh, background or culture background of the dietary patterns of an individual, we also understand how he or she lived. So, through that, we know how to intervene and how to give that person the right um, nutrition um, advice. Or uh, if that person requires a nutrition consultation, we will tailor fit whatever the nutrition care plan that we will be giving to him or her. Next. So these are the three major fields of nutrition and dietetics wherein most of the career opportunities um, in the field of BSND will actually revolve. So first we have the hospital and clinical dietetics. So by its term, this is actually a um, field wherein um, RNDs or registered nutrition dietitians will be working on therapeutic diets, will be preparing uh, meals in the hospital, not just for the patients, but also because some of the hospitals are also giving meals for their staff. No? So we all know that food is life. No? Without proper nourishment and um, maintaining good nutritional status in the hospital, patients um, will really have the tendency not to survive because, again, we need no fuel to boost our immune system, and also to um, survive, no, or, or what we call this, to uh, have um, our body ready for whatever the side effects of uh, every medical procedures, no, na gagawin sa kanya. That is why um, the nutrition and dietetics division in the hospital is really an essential part of the healthcare or the overall healthcare process. Next, for the public health nutrition. So these are actually fields also wherein RNDs or registered nutritionist dietitians will be working on the community. No, magbabahay-bahay, magtitimba. I don't know if our viewers from the Zoom and YouTube um, experience, no, nung bata pa kayo or nung, nung bata pa tayo, no, na may magbabahay-bahay, titimbangin kayo or even sa school. No, we gather data, so um, whoever are those are um, students no, na um, kulang sa timbang, and we will be working on that. We will collaborate with the local chief executives to implement programs 
no in um that will alleviate no problems related to health and nutrition we also do um, demo teaching or demo cooking for our parents and even uh, our uh, barangay health workers and barangay nutrition scholars not to help them um, be knowledgeable on how to keep um, our nutritional status uh, good no amidst um, whatever challenges that we have especially during the pandemic no our community uh, nutritionists are also busy no providing uh, meals no especially in uh, emergency cases like typhoon so our public health nutritionists are um, actually part no of the team that will help no or make sure that malnutrition will not happen no in those emergency cases and the last uh, field is the food service management so this is actually a field wherein we will be uh, practicing no yung skills natin in culinary arts no and also in management and entrepreneurship here um student our, our um rnds no if you wanted to push through no food business management or you wanted to put up your own food business establishment you can also consider this field of nutrition and dietetics because we have courses that will teach you on how to choose the right um, food uh, or business, no, and to look for a strategic, strategic location. How will you manage the personnel? How will you manage your resources as entrepreneurs? And also, uh, we also have subjects no, or courses that will teach you to do food processing, which will also help you not to put up your own food processing business. So later on, we will be. Uh, or I will be showing what are those subjects. So next. Okay, so our subjects um, for the nutrition and dietetics. So kanina, pinakita ni Sir Ruel ng set of subjects nila. So here naman sa BSNB, if you wanted to take up um, BS Nutrition and Dietetics as your um, course in college or tertiary level, so we divided these courses into um, five you know, um, categories. We have general education courses. Ito yung kukunin ng most of the freshmen or most of the most of the programs are taking this up because this will give them the fundamental skills that will help them you know, um, perform well in the major subjects or professional courses. And then the um, required courses or the fundamental courses not in the health sciences education. We also have biochemistry. We have microbiology and parasitology. So biochemistry will help you understand you know, the, chem the um, chemical principle and the different um, elements you know, or um, compounds within our body, especially like carbohydrates, protein, fats, so paano siya mag metabolize know how you will know the chemical uh, principle um, behind metabolism know how our body utilizes the food that we eat you also have microbiology and parasitology it is because in the field of nutrition and dietetics food safety is very important now we need to make sure that the food that we are preparing are safe no and will last longer Okay, so here in this microbiology and parasitology, you will know what are the nature of the different um, um, microorganisms, either good or bad microorganisms um, in the field of um, food and nutrition. Now, what are their characteristics? What are their nature? How to detect them and how to control them? We also have anatomy and physiology since we are dealing with human nutrition and food, we need to understand the human structure and how these structures work um, interdependently. Next, we have accounting. So as I've mentioned a while ago, that one of the fields um, of nutrition is food service management and putting up your or planning your own food service business or food business or food and beverage services business. Um, accounting is very important. No, It will um help you, you know, um, manage or analyze you know, your finances 
So if you notice, now the nutrition and dietetics is really a holistic um, program. Now, if you want, don't uh, if you don't feel to work in the hospital, but you wanted also to learn you no know, health and also you love cooking, then this might be the course for you. You also have biostatistics, which is very essential for um, research. Same is true with health economics. You no know, understanding the situation between supply and demand related to health sector and then development of psychology, of course, because nutrition counseling uh, requires um, understanding the behavior no, or, or behavioral management of a person. That is why we need to be equipped no, with um, the principles no, on how to understand human behavior. We also have logic, English, and of course, principles and strategies of teaching because one of our um, responsibilities also is to give advice or uh, to give nutrition counseling. And it is a, a form of um, teaching or, no, or sharing information to others for behavioral mo modification. So for us to be an effective nutrition counselor, we also need to know the different strategies, methodologies, and approach to teach our clients. So our professional courses, ito yung tinatawag nating major course. No, it will really uh, help give you no, an identity no, that you are a nutrition and dietetic student. So we have basic foods one and two. So in these courses, you will understand no, the basic principles on how to purchase, how to prepare, how to store, and what are the different changes you know, that food items undergo um, during cooking? You no, know, basic foods one and two. So hindi lang ito physical changes, but also it's chemical changes na nangyayari sa pagkain. Like, bakit kaya napag, uh, nilagyan mo ng um, sinigang mix or ng um, any acidic medium or ng... Um, yung parang pampaasim no, ng sinigang, bakit nagpiturn ng olive green, yung bright green vegetable? No? So bakit kaya um, once uh, or when we bit um, or when we separate egg whites and egg yolks, no, yung egg, egg whites, pwede siyang um, gamitin para uh, gumawa ng mayonnaise. No? Ano kaya ang principle Bakit um, yung isda, no? uh, pag nahuli siya, medyo firm pa ang meat. Ano explanation, but um, along the way, lumalambot na siya. Ano yung um, science behind it? So yan, i-discuss yan sa basic food. So in this course, you will really understand no? um, pag namamalengke kayo or bumibili or nag-grossy queer together with your parents, no? you will really understand what's the right way of purchasing food items. Also, we have basic nutrition. So, so first year, you will have uh, all the basics. No? Basic foods, basic nutrition. So basic nutrition naman, no, you will understand no, the uh, characteristic of each um, micro and macronutrients, the carbohydrates, the protein, the fat, vitamins, and minerals. So, ano yung mga pagkain na rich in um, ganitong vitamins or ganitong minerals, ano yung mga sakit no, na makukuha natin if ever we have lack or over of this kind of nutrients. So you will learn those things in basic nutrition. Also, meal management. So when you reach a second year, you will encounter meal management. No, You will uh, be making your um, own uh, menu. So you will have menu planning. no, And uh, you will um, understand different uh, way of ser uh, serving food. No, may mga French style, no, may mga ganon mga type of service. So um, we also have fundamentals of food technology. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. This subject will tell you no the different processes or food processing techniques. No, yung ating salting, yung paggawa ng chorizo, paggawa ng um, achara. No, paggawa ng tuyo, paggawa ng sardinas, you will learn those things here in the fundamentals of food technology. Next, uh, we also have 
nutritional assessment. So nutritional assessment, this in this course you will know the techniques, no, on um, ways or the techniques how to um, gather data necessary for understanding nutritional status of a person. Galing sa timbang, sa height, no, yung pagmeasure kung ilang calories kinakain niya, no, kung ilang calories ba ang isang cup ng rice. No, at saka buong araw, ito yung kinain niya, ilang kayang calories ang nakain niya sa isang araw. Tapos, um, yung data na nakukuha natin from our colleagues in the medical laboratory science, um, sciences or in the laboratory department, yung lab results, um, paano yun i-analyze and ano yung relationship niya sa nutritional status ni patient. So, dito niyo yan may encounter. Then, the nutrition care process. So, in this... Um, um, subject, you will uh, know, know the entire or the step-by-step -step, uh, formulation of the nutrition care plan from the assessment to diagnosis or identifying the problem related to nutrition and health of the person or of the client. And then what um, intervention we will be using to address that diagnosis or problem and how can we monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of that nutrition intervention. So we, you will know um, those things in the nutrition care process course or subject. Then the nutrition of the life stages one and two. So in these courses, you will um, understand you know, the different nutritional requirements and recommendations or um, uh, different nutrition considerations on the different life stages, which means from womb to tomb, no, galing sa pagbubuntis, no, infant, hanggang sa uh, panganganak, no, lactating uh, stage ni mother. So ano yung dapat na ipapakain, ano, paano dapat uh, i-co-compute kung ano yung uh, dapat kain ni mommy. No? At kung uh, halimbawa ay magsisimula ng kumain si baby, no, ng, aside from... Um, having the breast milk ano ba dapat yung arrangement no ng pagkain o yung sequence no ng pagbibigay ng pagkain kay baby and also pag naging um, school children na no or preschool ano ba dapat ang dapat or ano ba dapat ang ipakain or ibigay na food no sa ating mga chikiting so that ma-prevent natin yung pagkasira ng ngipin or yung um, pagiging malnourished. Kasi uh, siguro may mga kapatid naman tayo or naranasan natin maging bata. No? During that stage, masyadong uh, pihikan tayo sa pagkain. No? Or, uh, if you, or what are the techniques no? para, para talagang mapakain natin ang masustansyang pagkain yung mga bata. Because if you notice, no, kung sa mga bata, although not all, but mostly, mahilig sa fried. No? French fries, mga hash, uh, hash browns, or mga highly preserved foods. No? So, pa, or, um, what if uh, medyo eh, hindi nakakaluwag sa buhay, no? parating naging noodles, parating nagdedelata. So how can we transform that to a more nutritious food? So yan yung itatakaw dito sa Nutrition the Life Stages 1 and 2. And also, in this courses, malalaman natin kung paan natin aalagaan sila nanay at tatay or lolo at lola sa pagtanda nila, making sure that they still get not the right nutrients from the food that they eat. Even though na alam natin na sa edad na yan, medyo nangihirapan ng kumain sila nanay at tatay or lolo at lola. So paano natin make sure that they, that they still um, avail no the right um, nutrients no, from the food that they will be taking. So dyan, uh, yung malalaman sa course or sa subject na iyan. Next, nutrition therapy 1 and 2. Of course, by sa term pa lang, nutrition therapy, this is how we will um, treat, not, although not treat, but manage no, different medical conditions through nutrition or yung tinatawag natin medical nutrition therapy. No, different kind of systems, infectious or non-infectious diseases, ano yung mga different nutrition interventions, dyan yan malalaman. And then, uh, Food and Nutrition Research 1 and 2, of course, this will be the thesis part wherein students no, will explore no, different um, problems no? um, and they will formulate or they will conduct study 
no related to food and nutrition um, and applying the different principles of research no um, research one and two because again as a um, health related course we need to be scientific and we need to contribute to um, new body of knowledge so research is very important also in the field of nutrition and dietetics and lastly uh, we have the uh, nutrition education and public health nutrition so i already explained a while ago this will um, help you to know the different approaches on how to teach the public the right way and the right amount of eating or preparing food and of course we have practicum no practicum is or also ogp or internship no for public health nutrition it's 300 hours we will immerse you on the different um, local government units and public health sectors. Later on, we will be showing to you who are our partners. Hospital dietetics, it's 600 hours exposure. And the food service management, which is also 300 hours practicum or internship, exposures to the different um, food and beverage uh, services institution that will help you also to apply whatever you've learned in your three years of um, academic um, courses. So next slide, please. So these are the different career opportunities. So we have uh, being um, working in the hospital as clinical nutritionist dietitian, gerontological um, nutritionist dietitian, working on nursing care homes, no, sa ating mga uh, lolo at lola na may apatay, no, sa uh, mga matatanda. Food service manager, either you will be your uh, own um, or you will own a certain food service establishment and you will manage it or working in a food service um, establishment. You can be sports nutritionist if you are into sports nutrition, no, sporty kang tao and you value your health and you wanted to teach, no, approach uh, or the different ways on how to keep yourself um, or keep yourself healthy, no, maintain your speed and agility while you are doing your sports, then this course um, will also help you do that. And also the public health nutrition or being a public health nutritionist and food scientist. No, if you want to engage yourself in research and development, then you can also be a food scientist and etc. You can also be working on the academe. You can also work as nutrition counselors. Now, if you happen to visit malls, now we have um, uh, registered nutrition dietitians working on part-time, no, part-time jobs nila, no, working on some mga malls, giving nutrition advisories no, sa ating mga um, customers or consumers no, uh, regarding um their um kumbaga pa your nutritional status so they will assess you and they will um, advise you the right things to eat or the right um uh, way of eating and to maintain your um, good nutritional status and just to give you a hint medyo malaki laki din naman ang kita ng mga ganyan so i just uh, i don't know if their salary was already updated but um i guess this time they are having uh 1200 to 1300 per day for that job. So if you want that as an option, uh, then you might consider this course as well. Next. So these are our, um, some of our partners, you know, especially in the practicum, we have the Hospitality Institute of America, Philippines for our food service management, the Nutrition Foundation of the Philippines in Quezon City for our community and public health nutrition, and of course, our very own Southern Philippines Medical Center as our partner for hospital and clinical dietetics. And currently, we are uh, fostering partnership no, with private um, hospital here in Davao City to make sure that our students are really well equipped no, in terms of integrating the academe and the industry uh, practices. So next. So same is true with the medical technology a while ago. Our students are also having activities, no? Because again, here in UM, we are develop, developing you holistically. 
So, hindi lang pwede study, study, study. Medyo mag enjoy naman tayo paminsan-minsan. Kasi parang, kumbaga pa, are relieving our stress from our academic requirements. So, the things that I'll be showing to you are the activities that they conducted during the pandemic pa. Um, next. So, here we had um, um, the Panagtapo 2021. This is actually uh, our um, general orientation and somehow an acquaintance, virtual acquaintance party for the nutrition and dietetics students for the school year 2021-2022. Next. Pan Unite. This is actually one of um, the um, activity for the school year wherein it showcases the talents and also uh, parang battle of the brains ng our ng, um, mga BSNB students. Now, if you notice, we always have pan no, in the first um, word or syllable of every activity. Um, diba we all know pan is a term no, sa mga bisaya tinapay, but actually because pan stands for the Philippine Association of Nutrition, which is our um, organization. So we are now seeking um, for membership for the national um, chapter for the Philippine Association of Nutrition. So here in UM, so the same with the gamits of uh, BS Medical Technology, we also have our PAN-UM or the Philippine Association of Nutrition um, here in the University of Mindanao. So we uh, have different activities and once we already have our membership in the national level we will uh, we are now uh, we will now be ready for uh, participating in the different activities on uh, the national level next so here are our um, officers no current officers of pan no uh, mga magaganda at fresh no at um, fully nourished or mga Malulusog na mga pan UM officers, no? They are ready to help you, no? On uh, how to um, get along with the course, no? Kung may mga problems or concerns kayo or increase regarding the program, um, our pan UM officers will help you uh, with your concerns. So uh, we are a very uh, excited, no, to welcome you guys, no, in our um pan family. So um, I hope, no, we have almost ten or eleven participants, no, in Zoom, and also I don't know in YouTube. So please do spread the news, no, share, no, what you've learned, um, here in um, our info session, uh, so that you will also consider to come join and create your future career with us in the University of Bindanao Nutrition and Dietetics Program. So before we end, no, um, we will be presenting a short uh, video or promotional video for the Nutrition and Dietetics Program of the University of Bindanao. Thank you so much for listening. A pleasant day to everyone. Vincit Omnia Veritas. Since truth conquers all things. The University of Mindanao is a private non-sectarian school with its vision of providing quality, affordable, and open education. They promote excellence, honesty, and integrity, innovation, and teamwork. One of the courses they offer is Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. Dietetics is the science of how food and nutrition affects human health. Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics is a four-year program that develops students to be globally competitive professionals. The program also teaches students with the principles and procedures of the use of food for therapeutic purposes in the management of persons suffering from a disease. The three major areas in the study of nutrition and dietetics are hospital or clinical dietetics, community or public health nutrition, and food service management. The program is also a good 
preparation for medicine because of inclusions of clinical nutrition and hospital practicum. Not just medicine, but also sports nutrition. As one of the pioneers of the University of Mindanao Nutrition and Dietetics program, I feel very honored and grateful, of course, and on the top of that, I feel confident. No. I am confident that I will be a highly competent professional someday because the Department of the Nutrition and Dietetics program has molded me to the best version of myself with the quality, affordable, and open education. When it comes to experience, I have a lot actually. But the moments that I really miss during face-to-face -face are the actual cooking vlogs. We are trying different recipes, doing groceries, doing fun activities in microbio lab, and also eating out with my classmates after a long day. BSND students' life during COVID-19 pandemic. I do sometimes enjoy doing laboratory activities since it is challenging to do without the supervision of the teacher and it is enjoyable an amazing feeling to see that your output has been successfully performed. I still enjoy the laboratory activities despite this pandemic. So even though this type of setup is quite challenging, I still consider this as an opportunity for me to hone my learning strategies when it comes to studying the concepts and the methodologies of the subject. Teachers who who are masters of their crafts are doing their best to educate and make us competent nutrition dietetic student despite online setup they also partnered with other training institution to better hone the skills of the student hospital institute of america philippines incorporated Nutrition Foundation of the Philippines Southern Philippines Medical Center Nutrition and Dietetics Program is a newly offered course in the institution that aims to produce qualified and potent nutritionists and dietitian in the future. Come and join Start your career with us. Thank you so much you know, for um, having your time, your precious time, you know, to join this info session. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Professor Sarwin and also Professor Ruel, you know, for those insights that you've mentioned a while ago with regards to these two programs of the university. And right now, we are ready for um, questions you know, from our um, participants here in Zoom and also uh, in the YouTube channel. Now, if you have further um, um, things that you want to clarify you know, with these two programs. So you can use our chat box you know, to write your questions and you may also unmute your mic and um, ask questions for them. All right, so do we have questions from our participants? Um, Sir Bench, before yes. we makalapotan, no, uh, while our participants are thinking no, what questions they wanted to ask. Mm. So um, the programs of CHSE, no, MedTech and Nutrition Dietetics, Nursing and Pharmacy, are actually accepting um, students or senior high students from all strands. No, unlike other schools no, that uh, they require um, students coming from STEM and they will have bridging activities.
for non-STEM um, graduates. Since we are uh, valuing open education in the University of Mindanao, so students from all strands are actually welcome because we always believe that everyone has the potential to learn and to exam. So yun, there's a question with regards to UM boarding school. No, as of the moment, no, uh, UM has no um, boarding school inside, no, or uh, inside the school. But of course, outside, no, of the university, no, there are um, um, apartments, no, that can also accommodate you, and so that your um, once we'll have our face to face, no, in the classes, uh, you will you would have no difficulty not going to school. But as of the moment. No, wala tayong boarding school inside no, the university. All right. So while others no are still no, um formulating questions no, with regards to these pro programs under the College of Health Sciences Education of UM, let's take a look on what are the things that you um have to um to look into once. We will have the next semester and how can you enroll in the University of Mindanao via online. So please take a look at this. Hi, Ga! What to expect for the upcoming semester? Because of the pandemic, UM is taking action to make sure that students' education is not left behind. Get ready for the new normal online blended learning. As per Management Committee on Instruction, presented in the Quality Management Council, the entire thing is designed as a hybrid mode of instructional delivery with online learning through the LMS as the primary platform during the pandemic transition. We have e-learning through email, SMS, and group chat. M-learning through smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices. B-learning through Broadcast University on Air. Correspondence learning or the SIM SDL manual which can be picked up or arranged by courier. And finally, the residential or face-to-face -face mode depending on quarantine conditions. In short, students shall be encouraged to invest on the primary mode while taking advantage of the blenders. But don't worry, the school shall adapt to both asynchronous and synchronous learning where students can keep up with class on their own convenient pace. So, what are you waiting for? Enroll now at the University of Mindanao. You've heard about the University of Mindanao's quality, affordable, open education that is ISO certified, accredited with various highly respected organizations, and believes in a holistic education to develop diamonds in the rough. But how do you enroll as a new student in the middle of a pandemic? Step 1. Please fill out the online student registration through this link found on your screen or visit the official university website with the address as follows. This is what the form will look like upon loading on your screen. After you've filled in your details, please take note of the reference number that will be issued. You will need this reference number for the online payment. Step 2. You can forward your down payment through these following banks or payment centers. Step 3. Please wait for an email and text message containing your student ID number and the access code. Please note this might take at least two to three days, but if there is further delay, please call the UM cashier's office through this number. Step 4. After you've received your student ID number and access code, please log in to the UM student portal through this website address shown on the screen.
Step 5. Under the Online Enrollment option, please click Enroll Course. Step 6. Choose your desired session, then click the Yes option on the screen to finalize your class schedule. Afterwards, please take a screenshot of your enrolled subjects. This screenshot of your subjects will serve as your unofficial soft copy of the Certificate of Matriculation, also known as your Form 1. Step 7. The university's online enrollment system will provide you with your official UM email address. It will be sent to you via the email address that you wrote down in the student registration form, student portal, and text alert. Step 8. Remember, if quarantine restrictions in your area and in Davao City allow, you may claim your official Form 1 and UM Student ID at the Admissions Office, located at UM Embassy along Bonifacio Street, Davao City, right across the Bolton campus. Step 9. Please submit to the university these other required documents shown on the screen on or before the end of the semester. Congratulations! You are officially part of the UM community. See you soon, ga! So those are the things or that you may expect on the next semester and those are the um, procedures no, on how you can enroll in UM via online. So do you still have other questions no, for our professors no, on the programs that we've mentioned no, this morning? Meron pa ba? All right, so I think there's no, no um, questions no, from our from our audience. So um, for so for more updates no with regards to the University of Mindanao, you can just follow us on our social media pages. No, uh, we have the Facebook, no, Instagram, Twitter, and also TikTok. So you can just um search at Unimed Official, so so that you can um uh, you would be updated. No, on um, announcements here in the University of Mindanao. And if you want to um, also know other programs in the university, you can go to our YouTube channel, the University of Mindanao Official. You just have to click the playlist with regards to um, UM Info Session. So you can um, search no, uh, all those programs no, na, na previously no, featured here in our Program Info Session. All right, so there are questions here. Uh, um, tuition fee for BS in MedTech and also for BS in Nutrition and Dietetics. I think um, Sir um, Rowell and Professor Sherwin can also give us you know, with regards to the range you know, of tuition fee for these two programs. Professor Sherwin and Professor Rowell. Hello, good morning once again. Thank you, Sir Bench. Um, as for the tuition fee of uh, the BSMP MLS program, I think um, for first year or incoming first year, that ranges from, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is just an estimate uh, that ranges from 25 to 25, nearly 24, 24 to 27,000 per semester. As compared to other medical technology schools, the University of Mindanao is very friendly considering the facilities and, of course, uh, as what we are really embodying, uh, the values of quality, um, affordable, and open education. So 24 to 27 for first years. And uh, pretty much like um, the same with other uh, years, like second and third years, um, mag-increase na talaga siguro evidently on the internship um, or fourth year level. Thank you. For the ND, Sir Sherwin. Uh, thank you so much, Sir Rowell. So for the inquiry regarding um, the tuition fee, same thing with Sir Rowell. I cannot give the exact amount, no, but uh, as a, um, a purely um, an estimation, no, for our first year, it's about um, 24 to 25,000. No, that is just an estimate. So the, the total um, assessment no, or fees will depend on the number of subjects that the student will enroll and especially in terms of laboratory. And same thing with sort of well, um, 
tuition fee might um, really quite higher in the fourth year level because we will be affiliating with other agencies now. So they will have separate fees for their um, internship. But one thing is for sure, you know, with the UN's um, valuing affordability and providing quality education for everyone, you know, the scheme of UM, you know, of uh, having a um, way of uh, very flexible payment options, you no know, um, future UM students will really be blessed um, with that. So I guess, um, Sir Bench, if they wanted to have uh, questions regarding for that, can they um, ask? No um, email for from the accounting by or yes sir. So they can just go. They can also email now or call no, uh, the student accounting office no, of the university. So it is being flashed here. No, you can just have a screenshot so that you can have an exact or an estimate no of the tuition fee no or the um, total assessment no, for these programs and even other programs that you want to inquire to. And in terms of requirements no, and other um, things that you want to inquire regarding admission and also as uh, a registrar, so you can also call no, those um, numbers no, um, flashed on your screen. All right. So I think no, um, we're good. Do we have other questions from our audience? So, yon. So, um, you just have to be um uh, to keep um posted no on our social media pages so that in terms of um other webinars with regards to tuition fees and other um information in terms of enrollment, we'll have a separate session on that. But right now, no, uh, this is only regarding to the programs no that you may um um enroll. No, and be able to decide no, what would be you know, your career path. All right. So I think wala nang questions. Uh, final words from our two speakers, Professor Ruel and Professor Sherwin. Your message to our um, incoming freshmen. Okay. Good morning once again. So we are hoping no, that you can uh, join us in our journey in establishing a globally competitive Medical Technology School here in Davao City. So you are very much welcome. Let us, uh, we will be working hand in hand in making your future as future medical technologies um, put into reality. So God bless us all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sir Sherwin? Yes, Sir Benj. No, so in behalf of the Nutrition and Dietetics uh, faculty members, students and organization of the University of Mindanao. So um, we are very thankful no, for this um, event and also for the participants um, who attended this info session. Um, I hope that you will consider enrolling in the University of Mindanao Nutrition and Dietetics Department, as well as with the other programs of the College of Health Sciences Education. Please do tell your friends, your families, your um, Classmates, no, regarding the good news that we've heard uh, this morning. So we are very excited to see you, hopefully, on a limited face-to-face, -face, no, if um, things will get better. So thank you so much, and uh, see you soon, mga ga. All right. So again, thank you very much to Professor Ruel and also Professor Sherwin for giving us your time and sharing to us those perks of enrolling Um Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology and also Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. So hopefully, um, incoming freshmen, you, know, you have gained a lot of knowledge with regards to these pro uh, two programs. And we are very excited no, for soon. No? We will be, you'll be here in the University of Mindanao. So see you soon, mga ga. And for now, God bless and thank you so much. Ampi!